time factors. What is technique and how does it affect the image? The four prime exposure factors are voltage, which is KVP, current MA, exposure time, seconds or fractions of a second, distance, SID, OID, and inverse square law. KVP, what is KVP? Kilovolts controls how fast the electrons are sent across the tube. It controls quality, penetrability, and subject contrast. Increasing KVP also increases scattered photons, reducing image quality. Most KVP settings are set for thickness of the bone on technique charts. I was taught a baseball analogy from one of my clinical instructors for KVP. That has helped me. So high KVP, what exams do we use high KVP for? Chest x-rays. Um, we use that high KBP, low MA setting. So if you think of a major league baseball player throwing a fastball, high KBP is going to have a short wavelength. That fastball is moving fast to the target. That 117 KBP that you're using on a chest x-ray is going to have a higher penetration. It's going to move through that patient faster, which means lower patient dose. But high KVP also increases scatter. If you think of a window pane, if you throw a fastball at a window pane, it's going to shatter into many, many pieces. If my four-year-old lobs a softball at that same window pane, it's only going to crack a little bit, if any. So high KVP is their fastball. It's moving fast to the target, which means it has a short wavelength, higher penetration, higher scatter. But when you use high KVP, it's considered low contrast. So low KVP is the reverse. Low KVP has a long wavelength. It moves slow to the target. Lower penetration, which increases patient dose. Low KVP does have lower scatter. Low KVP is considered high contrast. What is contrast? Subject contrast is the degree of density difference between two areas on a rated graph. It makes it easier to distinguish features of interest, such as defects from the surrounding area. It's separated into short scale contrast and long scale contrast. KVP is the controlling factor of subject contrast. To make a visual change, you have to adjust it by at least 4%. Short scale contrast is using low KVP. So say like 50 to 70 KVP ranges. There's less shades of gray. It's mainly black and white, right? It's also considered high contrast. Long wavelength, remember long wavelength, it's moving slower to the target. It's not the fastball. Most often it's used for bone work and it reduces the scatter. How do I remember short scale? <laughs> if you look at my little penguin here, minus the yellow, right? So go with me on this analogy. Your, your short penguin is black and white. Your short little penguin, he likes to get high, all right? He's a naughty little penguin. So short scale is black and white and is considered high contrast. It uses low KVP. Long scale of contrast uses high KVP. This is gonna be your chest X-rays. They're gonna be between 90 and 120 KVP. There's a lot of gray in your chest X-ray, why? There's different shades. You have bone white, you have the black is air, but some is more dense than others. You have a heart shadow here, you have a gastric air bubble, the liver is over on this side. There's a lot more going on density-wise than in a hand. So you're gonna have a lot of gray. That's why this is considered a low contrast because more gray makes it low. This is a short wavelength because that high, that fastball is moving quick because it's at say 120 kbp. But anytime you increase kbp, you increase scatter. They go hand in hand. How do you remember long scale? I always think of long scale as a herd of elephants. There's a lot of gray, right? There's a lot of gray in a herd of elephants. <laughs> That's my only trick.
So for digital imaging, which you guys are really moving into and will be in for probably your, your entire time here, digital image contrast is controlled by the lookup table. Sometimes there's some tricky questions in the wording. Subject contrast is KDP, digital contrast lookup table. Digital contrast is a something, it's a processing algorithm that's built into the equipment and the technologist does not control it. So digital contrast lookup table, subject contrast KDP. These are terms that you will have on your board. So please start making notes now. Milliamperage or MA is the measurement of X-ray tube current, which is the number of electrons crossing the X-ray tube from cathode to anode per second. It determines the number of photons, remember that, number of photons and quantity, quantity. It controls receptor exposure, which used to be called optical density, which we've, the ART has gotten away from the optical density term. You guys need to know receptor exposure and it's directly related to patient dose. You might hear the term MAS. That is the MA multiplied by seconds gives you MAS. If you increase MAS, you increase in patient dose. It's a direct relationship. If you increase MAS, you increase receptor exposure, also a direct relationship. I love analogies. So someone gave me this analogy when I was a student, your MAS, if you think of a snowball, would you throw the same size snowball for a three-year-old that you would throw to, say, an adult during a snowball fight? No. Why? Their size. If your patient is bigger and has more mass, then you need to use more mass to penetrate through that part. How thick is your part? Is there swelling? Is there increased fluid that makes that part more dense? Then you are going to have to increase your MAS setting. Give a pediatric patient that's small. There's no swelling. There's no fluid. You need a smaller snowball, less mass. So if your patient has more mass, you need more mass. Exposure time. Ideally, your exposure times are always kept as short as possible. This minimizes the risk of patient motion. There are a few exposures that utilize something called a breathing technique where you do expand the um, seconds on your exposure. We'll get to that, right? But so just keep in mind, MA multiplied by seconds gives you MAS. MAS primarily controls the receptor exposure, again, which used to be called optical density. It also determines the number of photons in the primary beam. Receptor exposure we use in digital imaging, all right? So optical density is a film term. It's considered the degree of blackening on an X-ray film. MAS was the controller there. So what is receptor exposure? It is simply the number of X-ray photons that hit the image receptor. How much of that X-ray beam travels through the patient and hits your image receptor? That's receptor exposure. As MAS increases, the X-ray exposure increases. To create a visible difference in density, the MAS must be changed by at least 30%. Typically in the clinical setting, if my exposure is low, I tend to double my mass or half, I tend to double my mass if my exposure is low. If my exposure is high, I tend to half my mass. If you increase your KDP, that also increases receptor exposure, remember, because increasing higher KDP, higher penetration, it's getting through that patient, right? Brightness. Brightness is another digital term that you will go into super detail in your equipment and imaging classes. Brightness is the amount of luminance of display on the monitor. The brightness is the balance of light and dark shades displayed on the image. This is really similar to that of the lookup table. Brightness is controlled by the individual pixels on the image. MAS does not control brightness. Please don't get that confused. Remember, so put lookup table and brightness into their two separate categories. Those are digital terms. Distance. This is super basic, and I know you guys have already probably done this in your equipment class with learning the inverse square law, but 
X-ray intensity will decrease as the distance from the tube is increased. The farther away you are, right, the less penetrating it will be. Intensity is spread out. The intensity of radiation at a given distance from the point source is inversely proportional to the square of distance. What does that mean? That's the inverse square law, right? In clinical world, I do not get out my calculator and do the inverse square law. We do scoliosis x-rays for us at 72 inches. Normally, I do spine work at 40 inches. I take whatever technique I would use at 40 inches and I simply multiply by four if I'm moving my SID to 72. So it's a factor of four. So moving from 40 inches to 72, multiply your MAS by four. If you do something normally at 72 that you're now gonna do at 40, divide by four. You can thank me later. I do not do this formula in my clinical setting. These are some terms that I want you to know and recognize. SID, source to image distance. OID, object to image. And SOD, source to object. In terms of recorded detail, or you might see spatial resolution in your textbook, same, same, all right? Um, and magnification. The best image produced is produced with a small OID and large SID. Focal spot. Um, so there's an area on the anode that we refer to as um, the focal spot. We tend to use small focal spots for bony detail. So small focal spot for bony detail. You want to see detail within the bones and the joints. Large focal spot we use for chest and abdomen where I'm not looking for bony detail. I'm looking still for those shades of gray. So some influencing factors for KVP, there's something called the 15% rule. If I make an exposure on a patient and it doesn't come out how I want it, if I increase my KVP by 15%, that doubles the exposure to the image. If I decrease my KVP by 15%, it halves the exposure. So there's a rule, it's called the 15% rule, and to maintain the same exposure without doubling or halving the exposure to my film or patient, when you increase KVP by 15%, you are going to half the mass to get the same exposure. How does that work? So I brought a patient in for a an abdomen image, I used 20 mass at 80 KVP. They now have drank an entire container of barium. They have barium in their system. Barium, I have to use 110 KVP to penetrate. So going from 80 to 110, did I increase by at least 15%? Yes. So what do I need to do with my mass? I need to cut it in half. So I would use 10 mass at 110 kvp on my patient that now has barium involved. So increase your kvp by 15%, half your mass. We use 110 kvp for um, barium work. The 15% rule is always to maintain the original exposure. So that's where the tricky part of the question usually comes in. How do you utilize the 15% rule to maintain the original exposure? And it'll give you some options. If the KVP is increased by 15%, you're going to want to half your mass. If it's reversed, if the KVP is decreased by 15%, double your mass to maintain the exposure. I'm going to stop there and pick back up.